so this is a really cool session. Um, when we get lots of questions on, you know, how do we reach bigger audiences? What do we do? How do we reach this channel? How do we reach this channel? So um, when we heard about this, we, we were kind of shocked. So imagine deploying your technology in one fell swoop to 70 million users nationwide. I bet some of you drool at that concept. Well, that's exactly what Humetrix did, and they did not do it alone. They did it by forging a powerful public-private partnership, and today we bring you the players that made it all happen. So let me introduce you who will be leading this session. And I actually got to make this one up, so um, it's my really bad joke. Um, so Kim Terrell Knott is a member of the firm for the Healthcare and Life Sciences Division of Epstein Becker Green. Now Kim, here's the, here's the bad joke part. <laughs> Kim found her home at Epstein Becker Green when she was looking for a clinic that handled Epstein Barr. Okay, bad, I know. <laughs> that, yeah, best payback, because I was supposed to give Jill a, a fun fact about myself, and uh, I couldn't think of one. So there you go. That's what I get. But no. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jill. So uh, yeah, no, we're, we're excited to have uh, Supervisor Dave Robert, Roberts and Bettina Experton here. Let me just do a quick introduction of both of them. Um, sort of true underachievers. Uh, so we have Senator, uh, Senator, <laughs> Senator Roberts, <laughs> Supervisor Roberts has been in both the government and the private sector and you know, even somewhere in between with his role as uh, VP of Government Affairs at HIMSS. So he's served as a health policy advisor to, the, to President Obama and uh, also George W. Bush, which is quite an accomplishment in and of itself. Uh, he was in the Air Force and was involved in developing the TRICARE, which is the military insurance program. Um, and he's also, in the private sector, been involved as a corporate officer of SAIC, and he also owns and operates his own uh, real estate management company. So um, did I miss anything? It's perfect. No? I did also learn recently that he's also a father of five. So I usually ask what you do in your spare time, but should I assume you don't have any spare time with that? <laughs> Life is good. We were just talking. My oldest graduates today. Mm -hmm. um, next one is in Little League All-Star Game today. Next one had perfect attendance, kindergarten through third grade. Wow. Next one got <laughs> inspirational kindergartner of the year. And the last one just had her first hula recital. So Excellent. life is good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good, excellent. Well, uh, and so let me introduce Bettina Experton as well. Um, she similarly has a uh, stellar, uh, a stellar experience here. So she's been in um, industry policy and academia. So she's president and CEO of Humetrics, which we're going to hear a little bit more about. Um, and Jill mentioned, uh, which is based here in San Diego. She's been there for about 15 years, right? Uh, she's also a physician and a former public health officer in California, and she's also been a health policy advisor in the U.S., China, and France. Um, so has a nice international perspective. And she's an adjunct professor, um, faculty member at UCSD Medical School, and also a permanent professor at um, School of Medicine in Paris. So uh, we're very happy to have you here as well. Do you want to... Um, before we get started, do you want to do a, your quick presentation? I will. Good. Great. Thank you, Kim. Sure. So good morning. Thank you, Kim. And also thank you, the Digital Health Summit, and Jill and uh, uh, Rafi, uh, for picking such a provocative title for our presentation here. But in fact, uh, when you talk about distributing a technology at a massive scale, this is quite uh, descriptive of the position Umetrix is in right now. And for us, it's uh, of course the ambition to deliver and succeed uh, in our endeavor, in our business, in our enterprise. But more so, it's the um, mission we would like to accomplish here in making a difference on a large scale <coughs> in the US but also abroad in distributing in the millions of uh, hands of Americans and uh, other citizens around the world are some digital tools who can make a difference in their healthcare. And uh, if we are in the disposition to do this, 
is because Eumetrix has been able to capitalize on uh, dramatic happening in the last few years. On the policy level here in the US, um, national healthcare IT uh, policies have transformed uh, the physician's office and the hospitals in bringing them to the digital age. Um, and also, a transformative initiative took place in 2010 when President Obama announced that every American will have easy, direct access to their online health record. And that initiative is called Blue Button. But then the government called on industry, calling industry to bring innovation to make this Blue Button initiative work for everyone work for patient, work for physician. And that's when Eumetrix um, came about and uh, capitalized on that call. And we delivered a solution which we called iBlueButton. And um, iBlueButton, as the name indicates, is a mobile solution in the patient's hand, in the physician's hand. And if we can distribute at scale in two millions, it's because we capitalize indeed on mobile technology and no infrastructure needs to be deployed. Most of us have this type of device in our hand. And the iBlue Button run, uh, app runs on the patient mobile phone and the physician mo mobile phone or tablet uh, to deliver on those national policies. So um, when we talked about the impact uh, technology digital health can have, Indeed, the um, IOM pointed out in a report in September 2012 that on the economic side, one third of our $2.1 trillion of healthcare expenditures are wasted. And wasted in big part because the health history of a patient, the up-to-date health history of a patient is not available at the point of care when a physician is about to make a critical decision in terms of diagnostics or therapeutics. So looking at the sequester situation in which we are in, 120 billion um, every year, times 10 years, in fact, this healthcare waste is, uh, represents seven times the sequester amount. So I was also a little provocative when uh, I chose that title for an op-ed which was published earlier this year by the Union Tribune. There is an app to help cure the nation debt crisis. There is indeed an app, and it's called iBlueButton. But the Blue Button initiative um, has been taken notice by many in our digital health community and another uh, digital health entrepreneur uh, in a blog uh, at Forbes just a couple of weeks ago, was writing a blue button to solve the structural deficit is there. But as a public health physician and as a physician turned entrepreneur 20 years ago, for me, the motivation is to make a difference in patients' lives. And um, so going back to this IOM report, the IOM also pointed out that besides the waste, 100,000 Americans were dying um, uh, every year from preventable medical errors. This is many jumbo jet crashes and uh, action need to be taken when you are confronted with such a, a public health drama. And many of these deaths, again, are caused by the lack of current patient history at the point of care. And among the recommendations, the IOM made in its uh, September 2012 report was to capitalize on mobile technology so that data could be shared at the point of care. Patients should be informed, engaged, and being the own coordinator of their care among the many providers they have to visit in their uh, healthcare journey. So what is uh, Blue Button? Blue button is this uh, logo, this uh, blue circle here with an arrow. And uh, that was, the, again, that the symbol um, uh, which illustrates that concept that Americans today can easily access their online health records. 
And uh, as it can be easy with the red button at Staple, why it couldn't be easy for all of us to access our online health records? And that's what our blue button is all about. So this initiative launched by the federal government in 2010 was operationalized by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid, CMS, the VA, and uh, DOD, and TRICARE, giving enrollee beneficiaries of those federal programs direct, easy access to their online health record from their portals by looking at that blue button logo button and uh, clicking on it to download their records. But this initiative is not limited to federal program. Since then, 400 organizations have embraced the Blue Button Initiative. Payers, United, Aetna, um, EMR companies, uh, IT companies, uh, so next to Umetric, there is Microsoft and a few others. Um, and um, consumer group, patient advocacy group, have embraced that initiative and are behind it. So today, more than 400 organizations are behind the Blue Button Initiative and more and more payers and uh, uh, providers with uh, EMR, which will be newly certified next year to output a Blue Button record to qualify for meaningful use stage two. Um, with thanks to that embracement on the private sectors of the Blue Button Initiative, indeed, millions of Americans can today access a blue button record, their health record summary, and they amount to over 80 million. <coughs> so what is the iBlue Button app? The iBlue Button app, to a degree, is a mobile embodiment of the Blue Button initiative. And what we did, we responded to the Blue Button initiative, which uh, give, again, American access from a patient portal such as the mymedicare.gov portal here, uh, display on the left, access to your health history. Coming from Medicare, that health history is generated by claims, by medical claims, and they can amount to uh, um, many pages of printed documents. And uh, as illustrated on this slide, uh, for one given patient, we could uh, um, that record could amount to over 300 pages of claim data. And those claim data uh, cannot be presented as such as the point of care and the physician to go over that uh, critical up-to-date uh, history a given patient wants to share with his doctor. Uh, on top of it, those claims data are full of codes. Uh, they are not in English and they are not usable by neither the patient or the providers to assess uh, the current situation of a patient and uh, have access to that critical history. So iBlueButton brings this uh, paper output of medical claims into a usable, actionable electronic record on the mobile device, of the pa on the patients, and on the physician tablet. And this is done directly on the device. We use the power of that very powerful computing device, which is today a mobile phone or a tablet, and the computing is done on the edge, no need of complex and costly infrastructure to do the computing on the cloud, in the cloud. Uh, this is done on board the user's device um, and in the direct control of that user's and uh, in that private space of the user's device. And we turn that paper record full of codes, not usable, into this one screen of uh, a health summary with all what is critically needed for a patient to review uh, his health record and for a physician to have a quick view and a quick understanding of uh, the medical need of that patient. Problem list, medication in all their detail, um, um, a history of where the patient has been, inpatient admissions, ER visit, outpatient visit, imaging studies, so the, those are not repeated and redundant tests and procedures do not take place because that history is right there. But iBlueButton goes one step further. Again, we, we capitalize on mobile technology. So on one hand, the patient with one tap of uh, a button on his app can access his record from Medicare, from TRICARE, from the VA, 
from Aetna and so forth, and starting in January 2014, from any EMR which is certified for meaningful use stage two. So the patient quickly access the record. The record is transformed, it's decoded, it's presented in a usable format. And then here we are at the point of care where the decision, the critical decision is taking place between a patient presenting that history and going, going over his medical needs and a physician. And the physician use another mobile device, typically a tablet. Today, over 60% of physicians are using tablets. So you indeed have an infrastructure at play here with a large majority of Americans using uh, smartphones and physician embracing mobile tablets such as the iPad. So the novel technology Umetrix has developed to make use of the Blue Button Initiative is to uh, allow the patient to easily transmit that record which has been downloaded in real time on board his phone with a novel optical data transfer technology device to device and cross platform. So with the tap of a button, the uh, patient phone generate a one time type of QR code um, which contain portion of an encryption key and a record locator and uh, on the physician side, the companion app called iBlueButton Professional um, can receive that record. The physician taps the receive button, can scan that QR, one time generated QR code, and the record arrive on the physician side with also metadata. Uh, the patient uh, um, has also included in his record and uh, generating alerts on the physician side when the patient indicated that the medication was no longer taken or when the condition was uh, not current, for instance. And it's a two-way communication. So right there at the point of care, the, which uh, can be the emergency room, a physician's office, but it can, can also be in the home because this technology apply in a telemedicine scenario. So it's a two-way communication and the physician in return, right there when seeing his patient, can generate right away some patient instruction, a visit summary, and push that data directly to the patient's phone, including images such as an X-ray. So iBlueButton won that uh, competition last year, the Blue Button Mashup Challenge, and has been recognized by HHS as a trans transformative tool to make a difference uh, in the lives of millions of Americans. And um, specifically, Dr. Farzad Mostachari, the director of the Office uh, of, uh, um, of the ONC, National Coordinator for Healthcare IT, reporting to Secretary Sibelius, has been using himself this app to care for his own dad. And um, he's, uh, he has been telling this compelling story or care, providing this uh, critical caregiving to his dad in downloading his dad with his permission, his Medicare blue button record with the iBlue button app and uh, be able to help his dad overcoming an urgent situation away from home and that was happening at Thanksgiving last year. So Dr. Fozad Mastachari has been a spokesperson for I blue button, illustrating a national policy which can make a tremendous difference in many uh, Americans' lives. But as a physician, again, for me, it's about, it's about um, saving lives when we can. It's about the quality of our well-being of our patients. And uh, the testimony of uh, Beth Schindler uh, who has been using our app, iBlueButton, and was able to indeed save her father's life in avoiding uh, a critical medical error with a prescription of a med which was not requir uh, required and could have interact with other medication her dad was taking, um, has been a wonderful spokesperson as well to tell everyone about the value of such technology and to my surprise, um, last week I was invited at the White House. There was a meeting, a five-hour meeting, uh, grouping leaders in the industry, uh, but also patient advocacy group. And uh, the meeting was about launching a national campaign about Blue Button. So more than uh, us in the industry will know about it, but the public who can benefit from it and, their pr and providers 
will know about it. And to my surprise, who, who kicked off that meeting and told everyone about what uh, technology and uh, national initiative can do, that was Bess. Bess told us about our I blue button story and that's how we kick, up, kick off the meeting. And uh, at the end of the meeting, most of us committed to participate and support this national campaign. So thank you very much. Spread the word as well. It's about um, the Blue Button Initiative for everyone to access their re records. And there are tools out there to make that record usable, actionable, and save lives. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great, that's an amazing example of everything that we're talking about. So um, I wanna step back maybe just a little bit and I wanna hear more about this in particular, but step back a little bit and, and ask both of you at a much higher level, how do you define, how are you defining public-private partnership? I mean, there's a lot of different ways that companies or individual public can interact with the government and sort of how, you know, how would you define and describe um, public-private partnership? Well, I think San Diego County is a perfect place to be having this conversation. And we are the second most populated county in California, the fifth most populated county in the United States. We have tremendous innovation that is going on right here in this county. And a lot of folks don't realize, and until recently I didn't, all the different levels. I used to work for the federal government, both the congressional side and the executive branch. Mm -hmm. I have worked um, at local. I was a council member and a mayor here in the local San Diego County area. And then for the last five months, I've been one of the five county supervisors representing the largest district in San Diego. And I think, you know, because of this experience, I've seen the opportunities that the federal government has really played the state government to make investments so private industry can really make a lot of these innovative challenges that they're making. So to me, public-private partnership is helping lay the policy direction where we want to go, providing some incentive to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for the last five, six years, we've seen a lot of federal funding flowing in the electronic health record marketplace mm -hmm. to encourage incentive, but that was at the electronic health record. And now all these applications, like what Dr. Expertin's talking about with iBlueButton and others, these are all the next level of where we're going to, where we're seeing already future investments that the federal government wants to make. I will concur with, with Dave. I, th I think government on one side has been the driver on many fronts, and 60% of the healthcare dollars uh, come from governments, and, uh, and oftentimes, and uh, go uh, government, federal government sets the stage in terms of reimbursement policies, or uh, here we are about to uh, put healthcare reform into action. Um, and um, in the last uh, four years, this uh, meaningful use incentive for, for uh, installing and using uh, electronic medical records uh, has tremendous impact um, on the healthcare IT industry, uh, distributing today $18 billion of $30 billion, which have allocated, been allocated to that effort, uh, stimulating an economy, and uh, also calling for again, innovative solution. And uh, so this partnership is indeed working fully uh, between governments setting policies, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, deploying, providing the means to deploy an infrastructure in terms of EMR, uh, coming with this transformative policy of giving American access to their online records. And, um, and here we are in this, uh, IT reach down of San Diego and County, uh, we are well positioned to respond to those type of call and this changing, rapidly changing environment to solve our tremendous needs. Yep. Just one other thing I'd mention on this, here in San Diego County, we have an initiative called Live Well San Diego. It's a 10 year county mm -hmm. initiative to try to change our um, eating habits, our exercise habits. And right now there's a contest going on at the county and we're actually mm -hmm. tracking our eating for two months. And my team's in 17th place out of 68 <laughs> teams. And, but we're doing that online and with apps to, to really track what we're eating. 
but we're also, we just signed up our second large school district. It happened to be in my district the other night up in Encinitas. Mm -hmm. We just signed up our first large chamber of commerce, the San Diego North Chamber. But I think the role of government can be to help lead the direction and then get out of the way so private industry, I mean what we just heard about in this initiative with iBlueButt and others, you know, we can kind of set the direction just like the Bush administration and the Obama administration said, here's incentives, here's what we can do, this is where we'd like to go and why we'd like to go there. And of course, one of the, um, the positive benefits of the recession that we were in was that we needed to stimulate the economy so there was a good feeling at that time to flow federal funds into this. But I think the federal public piece of this, they can set the policy mm -hmm. and then get out of the way so private industry can then react and move forward. Yeah, and I think that's a good, what you were talking about in terms of Live Well San Diego is a good example. The one question that I've had too is, is it always just at the federal level? Are there things that more local state governments can do or should be doing with industry? Um, and I think, and I guess the, the other question as we're talking about San Diego in particular, but I think that this is true with other communities, is there's a large government, you know, military presence here, which I think um, have, could present unique opportunities for additional collaboration or partnership. And have you seen that either in your private sector experience or even within the, the county? Well, from, from my experience, and just to level set, San Diego County has an annual budget of $5 billion. And so that's a fairly large budget. This is budget month, so we're putting together our budget. Our fiscal year starts July 1st. Mm -hmm. Over 50% of that funding is not from San Diego County taxpayers. It's federal money and state money because in California, all counties are charged with carrying out federal and state programs. So here, all that flows down to the county level. There's 58 counties in California and there's 298 of me running around trying mm -hmm. to do this. Um, all counties have five supervisors except San Francisco that has 11. And so, um, so we're all really charged with doing this. Here in San Diego, we're blessed with a large military presence. We have the Navy, the Marine Corps, and, uh, um, and there is a very close collaboration that we do with them. We recognize the value of them to the economy, to jobs, and so there is close working together with us on these initiatives. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in the healthcare IT space, you know, it's interesting to hear about these different federal programs. The traditional view of government is more bureaucratic, not one to be the innovator or spur innovation. And so, you know, why do you think it's so critical to have a public-private partnership in the technology field? Um, is it different than other industries? Is there, is there something that's driving that distinction? But in terms of healthcare IT, I mean, healthcare has been trading in terms, uh, with regard to adoption of information technology and more novel form of information technology mobile. And um, so um, faced with tremendous expenditure, 18% of our GDP, uh, uh, a big uh, um, reason for our, our deficit situation uh, at all level, at the, at the state level, impacting um, you know, sizable counties like San Diego, um, government had to take action and um, so um, the federal government indeed uh, took action to, so that healthcare IT will come finally to uh, healthcare and try to bring this uh, system or non-system as we call it uh, uh, with um, uh, multiple providers who cannot well communicate with each other and which result in redundant uh, tests and procedures and a lot of waste there was urgency to, to have IT come to them and the government had to put our financial incentive into play. So that was one of the good um, outputs of the uh, fiscal crisis in which we were. Um, we had $30 billion allocated for investing in healthcare IT and bringing incentives on the table for physicians and hospitals to equip themselves with electronic medical record systems. 
You asked the question why, last year when I ran for supervisor, and I'm the first new supervisor in 18 years here in mm -hmm. San Diego, the number one thing that the five candidates talk about was jobs. And when you look at the good paying jobs that are in this field and why we can do it here in San Diego County, you look at the companies that have been b birthed here and grown mm -hmm. up here, the SAICs, the Qualcomm's, West Wireless, you know, all the different initiatives that have really started here. But because we have a big life science, biotech, the military presence, we have tourism, both, you know, national and international medical tourism, people that come here for the health care. Mm -hmm. We have a very thriving um, um, health system setting here in San Diego. So it creates creates good paying jobs, it helps the, you know, the economy overall, and I think really all the pieces come together here in San Diego. Yeah, and so, so you mentioned international tourism, that made me think about just um, the U.S. federal healthcare system is somewhat different than the rest of healthcare systems globally, and I know Bettina, you've had some experience with, the, with NHS, and I just wanted to get your thoughts in terms of is the U.S. trailing or leading um, in terms of capitalizing upon these public and private partnerships? Interesting with the example of the NHS, the NHS is adopting now an American initiative with Blue Button mm -hmm. um, because there is, I think there is a need worldwide for individual, otherwise consumers, uh, to, um, to be um, wiser and more informed about their own health care. It's costly, it impacts our lives, and uh, so there is a worldwide movement uh, for, for individuals to access uh, healthcare information, to have access to your own healthcare records. Uh, new technology, especially mobile, makes that feasible. Um, so the difference in countries like the NHS, where you have one single payer, um, the government is also the purchaser of the technology and have the means to deploy. Um, so the NHS is adopting this Blue Button Initiative, uh, made a political commitment by 2015 to uh, have every British citizen access their own online health records. So uh, you metric in the position to deploy that technology, a UK version of I Blue Button in the UK, and that's very exciting. That's, that's quite an opportunity. So. Now, Eumetrics has been in other industries beyond just healthcare. So you've been, you've also been in the banking and finance industry, the wireless or telecommunication industry, so what have you. How, how has the, how's your experience from a private company perspective varied by industry in terms of its engagement with the government or the, the public sphere? So interestingly, Kim, we, um, we deploy a technology in banking or in the telecom industry not intentionally, but by accident. <laughs> um, because I'm a physician, I'm the founder of that company. Uh, you have uh, a strong team of clinician, physician in our company, as well as extremely talented uh, technologists and some of the best mobile app developers, all located in San Diego County and in North <laughs> County. Um, and um, so for years, you know, healthcare uh, IT development efforts, uh, we believe that um, it would make sense and it would be, be beneficial for the patient to have access to that information. So 15 years ago, the mobile device was not yet the smartphone, but you had other form factor uh, where you could put that information in the patient's hands. And that form fa factor was a smart card, an electronic card with a chip embedded in the card. And it was used in the military uh, but not used uh, by civilian, and, uh, but we were the first one in the U.S. to deploy uh, smart card healthcare applications mm -hmm. and putting on that card that minimum critical information about our health history, our meds, where uh, the list of our physician, our emergency contact, and so forth. And uh, we are a little premature with that idea. And this was before the High Tech Act, and this was before $13 billion were infused in the economy. But the technology we had deployed, uh, developed at the time was meeting also consumer need in other areas, because the concept was to uh, keep in your hand 
uh, information which we use in our daily life or healthcare information, but that could apply as well to access your online bank banking account. Um, and the technology we developed, the IP behind that technology, the issued patent, has been very successfully licensed and deployed in banking, in telecom, mm -hmm. around the world. And thanks to those government initiatives, we are strongly back in healthcare as we wanted to be day one. <laughs> yeah, so, so just to follow up on that, so on, in the other side of your business, in terms of the non-healthcare side, you weren't necessarily as dependent or you didn't need that public-private partnership um, as much to have a success, but you found that a really critical aspect for to be able to launch successfully in, in the healthcare sphere? So there was the same consumer needs mm -hmm. um, and uh, other industry uh, capitalizing on those new form of uh, uh, information technology uh, mobile um, device with different form factors evolving from smart car to USB flash drive. We developed a technology for the Beijing Olympics, which was based on the same concept as I blue button. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so same consumer needs, same consumer demand, industry more responsive and more inclined to adopt novel technology. Healthcare has been trailing. That's where the government mm -hmm. had a critical role in making that change. Uh, interesting. And, and I think it's interesting when you look at the technology and how it can be diversified into the different, you know, segments, mm -hmm. whether it's healthcare. You know, interesting just recently that um, Northrop Grumman announced that they were merging all of their unmanned aerial vehicles here to San Diego from Florida and New York. And a technology that was developed for one area, the war on drugs, and they're using it now in other areas for national security and, and other issues. And the same thing in healthcare and border security, that things that might have been developed by one of the major companies here, SAIC, Qualcomm, or whatever, that it's being used in other fields now. And just one other thing I would point out here in San Diego County, it's the tremendous population diversity. The fastest growing group here in San Diego is the Asian Pacific Islander group. And um, up in my district in Carmel Valley and that part of North County, a mm -hmm. lot of folks are moving here from China, from Japan, from Korea, the Philippines, bringing in a lot of very educated people that we need to be doing a lot of these projects in addition to people that are from here. So I think that diversity of population here is also helping fuel a lot of the reasons we're seeing a lot of federal funding flow into this area. Mm, interesting. So I want to um, reserve a few minutes for questions, but so I'd like to get from each of you maybe your top three tips or practical, practical suggestions for folks in industry in terms of how they should be engaging with the government. What are some practical tips? What, what are some things they shouldn't do? What, sh what should they do? How, you know, how, would you, um, how would you advise them in terms of what they, if they're looking to have the success that you had, Bettina? Well, talking about healthcare, healthcare is complex. Um, you have a, a complex regulatory framework, um, and uh, we all need to be educated, informed, and, uh, and uh, seeing where regulation evolves, uh, where new initiatives are taking place, uh, and being attuned to those change and responsive, and seize that opportunity when it comes. And um, indeed, um, partner with the federal government who needs uh, to uh, reach out to industry to make their policy work. Uh, so they welcome indeed that collaboration. Um, it was, I was in the White House for the fifth time in the last 12 months, yeah. <laughs> last Thursday. And um, I was there, you know, representing a, an healthcare IT company which delivered on their policy to show some success and uh, some results, um, and, um, and my technology totally depended on that initiative. And so it's a win-win situation. Um, so being informed, um, being good partners in understanding the needs of this complex healthcare market, the regulatory framework, um, and uh, delivering what is needed to make those policy work from an industry perspective to meet consumer needs. Um, and it can only work, I think, in healthcare and partnership with uh, government entities. Mm -hmm. And I think my tips, the first one you're doing what I would recommend, it's to go to conferences like this. You can pick up really good tips here 
but they're not all necessarily just in the sessions. It's like when we were in the room over here having a private conversation, it's the networking, the people that you talk to. I think it's really critical that you learn, and this size makes that a really good type of opportunity. So I think that would be one, at, um, one um, tip. I think a, a second one is, is to look for opportunities. CMS has a new initiative coming out right now, this month of June, to apply for innovation. Last time, we, um, Cal State of California got 10 awards here in this state, so apply for federal funding. And the third one is, and it's, it, this is always happening to me, it's if you have good ideas like Bettina has, you know, with iBlueButt and other, tell people about your good ideas because I can guarantee you elected officials are not full of good yeah. ideas, but because we travel in such really diverse mm -hmm. circles, we hear about things and then we can work on those things. So if you know of something, we might know we can call you know, the local congressman or the local whoever or call the White House and just say, hey, I know this, can you direct us in the right way to go? Mm -hmm. That's great, that's great. So I think we have a, one minute <laughs> left. <laughs> um, yeah, we, so are there we, any we questions? Have, in the audience? We have time for one question. Does that, um, if not, we can. Who's the lucky winner? I don't see any hands up there. Yes, we have a winner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, always interested in following the money. Well, give, give us a quick overview of where the money goes and how much is involved here with something this big. Is that directed, who's, it, something as big as what? Uh, blue Button or the Innovation Grants? Right, right, the Blue Button, sorry, yeah, button. Uh, the program. 35 million going to 70 million, that's large scale. That's a big part of the marketplace. Right, do you have? So, um, interestingly, the $30 billion uh, government allocated to healthcare IT uh, didn't directly cover the type of technology we are deploying right now, but it needs uh, other uh, change in the industry and meet the needs of uh, payers, of uh, new healthcare delivery systems such as accountable care organization. So um, it meets the needs as, as well and starting with um, patient organization, patient advocacy group. So um, our solution is paid for on a subscription basis, PMPM PM or yearly license are based on those large number of end users at the million level by those various um, enablers of, uh, of distributive that technology on the payer side, uh, patient advocacy group, uh, accountable care organization and large provider system. Um, because we deliver a solution which is uh, enabling to achieve uh, the, the cost containment they need to achieve with those new delivery models uh, which is no longer based on a pure fee-for-service model, so they have to track the use of services in and outside their system. Uh, so there are powerful economic factors at play to justify uh, the deployment of the type of technology we developed. Um, but the price on an individual basis is fairly low. That's why the scalability of that technology is powerful and achievable. Great. Great. I'm sorry we don't have more time for more questions. However, um, they're going to be here, and they're going to be out there, and I'm sure you'll have questions for them directly. So I wanted to thank you both, Bettina. I really appreciate you, Supervisor. Thank <laughs> That's you. fantastic. Good. Thank you, Sam. Good.